Are you ready for a reboot? Welcome to the Sheila Mack Show, reality at its finest. History reminds us those hit hardest often become the change makers. This year, we've all hit crazy economic, social, and emotional rock bottoms. We all get knocked down. Something hits globally, locally, personally. It affects our health, finances, our relationships. We have to recreate a business or career. Each show, Sheila and her special guest will be sharing their reboot stories, guiding you with real solutions to upgrade and up-level emotionally, mentally, physically, spiritually, and financially. Here on NBC's KCAA Radio, if you're ready to pull yourself up by the bootstraps and bra straps, enjoy a listen. Here's Sheila. Welcome to the Sheila Mack Show, reality at its finest. Here we have real people sharing real stories and actionable steps to help you reinvent, rebuild, and reboot your business and personal life on your terms. I'm your host, Sheila Mack, and today we have special guest Stacy Hyland. Stacy is an internationally recognized business growth strategist, coach, and author. She serves as vice president of consulting and a senior coach for Chet Holmes and Anthony Robbins' world-renowned business mastery programs and was named International Coach of the Year in 2016. Stacy helps six to seven figure entrepreneurs add a zero to their business without the hustle. She is the author of the soon to be published book, Hidden Profits, More Clients and Cash. She is the creator of the Hidden Profits System. All right, welcome to the show, Stacy. Thanks, Sheila. And we got the twin memo today, so I'm really excited about that. We're on theme here. <laughs> and I'd like to start off with, this show actually came about with my new best-selling book, Bootstraps and Bra Straps, the formula to go from rock bottom back into action in any situation. I wrote it right before our pandemic. Wow, <laughs> so, what a great title. I love it. Yes, thank you. And we've had every situation. So I'd like to start off with asking if you have a time in your business or personal life where you experienced a tough situation and how you got back on track? Oof, there was a lot of times I had a tough situation. Um, you know, I would say one of the, the tough times I had was when I first started my business, I was, um, I'm American, but I was living outside of Montreal, Canada, and I had a small baby. The the, where I lived is 99.8% French speaking. And I was going to um, networking meetings like BNI, like every week I was getting up at four o'clock in the morning, nursing the baby, going to the meeting, coming back, like my husband and I would transfer the baby at Tim Hortons parking lot. And, you know, it was really frustrating because I felt like I was doing all of the work. The market wasn't there. It was just when coaching first started. So people didn't even know what a coach was. They would be like, which sport do you coach? You know, <laughs> and that was like, no, not that kind of coach. And so what happened was it was really frustrating because I felt like the people that I was talking to really didn't know what coaching was, didn't believe in coaching. And then they also were too small of a business. A lot of them, they didn't have the budget for coaching. Plus I was trapped, you know, because of the French language and having a baby. So what I, that came like that perfect storm of like me doing all of the networking, the coffees and all of that. One of my friends introduced me to the gentleman that, you know, Chet Holmes. And so it actually came at the absolute perfect time that she said, you know, this gentleman, Chet Holmes is looking to add coaches to his team and he will mentor you. And when I, when I met Chet and you've experienced him yourself, like I said, oh my gosh, this guy knows what he's talking about. I was one of the first two people he brought on board mm -hmm. and it was just a miracle and it allowed me to get access to you know, people that needed my help and I had the help that they needed. And it was a really good, you know, partnership for a long time that we worked together. Wow. What a gift. So sometimes when things aren't working out, it almost seems like the universe is conspiring for our best interests and guiding us to something even better, better than we can imagine most of the time. So, well, I think that was, it's so true. Like a lot of times we have a certain way that we picture it working. Mm -hmm. And I think, you know, the fact that I was open to it and the fact that Chet was also open to it, that it was like, you don't have to stop your business to do, you know, to work with him. It was like really synergistic and we were partners in revenue share and everything. So it worked out really well. Wow. That's incredible. And as a mom, 
a working business mom. <laughs> how did that work out with a little one? Um, how, how did you manage to be the manager of your business or helping so much and then having your little one? Yeah, so I was very, very um, cognizant of how I built my business because of the fact my dad died when he was 56. Mm -hmm. And so when he died, he hadn't done any of the things that he wanted to do. He hadn't hit the goals he wanted. He didn't spend the time he wanted with us. So I knew that I wanted to build my business in a way that I could be there for my kids, be able to, you know, go on field trips with them until they were too cool for that. Um, and so I, I had actually, I actually had a grand, not my mom, because my mom lived in another country, but I actually had a grandma come in my house and mm -hmm. take care of my daughter so I could still nurse and still take care of my clients with naps and all of that. So it worked really well. Wow. That's great. Yes. And that's something that's so important. It really affects our kids actually in a good way when they see us doing what we love and living our passion. It, it makes a big difference later on in life for sure. Uh, I actually brought my youngest two that were teens at the time to uh, Tony Robbins Platinum Program, and they traveled with me for two years straight <laughs> before college. And it was the best. Oh, that's amazing. Yeah. Yes, it was a gift of time. Um, my youngest son did have a heart condition since fifth grade. So, you know, it was like what really matters when you have something like that. It's what matters most. And that family time was priceless. He did. My youngest son passed away in the oh, so latter, part, yeah, latter part of 2019. And it was like, when we look back at our memories, I am so grateful that I said, you know what, let's just go, let's have fun, let's travel the world, let's be together and have all this family time and quality mm -hmm. time. And it really was priceless. And now as our world is locked down, I'm even happier that I, I traveled and, and had that fun with the family. So it's important. Well, that it totally gives me chills, like full body chills to hear you say that, Sheila. And I'm so sorry for the loss of your son. Um, because I think so many people, they wait until it's too late and there's just, you can't get that time back. And, you know, you see the memories popping up on Facebook of like the kids, you know, doing things. And you know what? I, I, I think, you know what? We, we joke that our boat was our best investment we've made. Mm -hmm. And people are like, a boat is not an investment. And I said, but for us, it was an investment in our family of like having a place that the kids want to hang out that, you know, my stepdaughter is now 27. She still wants to come and hang out with us mm -hmm. because, you yeah. know, we have fun together and we create family memories. So my mission since my dad died became to give entrepreneurs back to their families. Mm -hmm. You know, I have clients now that have grown from six to eight figures and they've still been able to be there for the important moments in their family's lives. Like during the pandemic, one of my clients who has an eight figure business, he said, I'm so grateful that I've built it this way that I can actually take a step back because my daughter really needed me. She was really struggling mm -hmm. mentally and he was able to take some time to go spend with her and take her, you know, away someplace to, to relax and, you know, right. get her mindset back together. Oh, that's so important. And that is one of the things that I struggled with most when I had my first business going forward at lots of gift stores starting at 23 and then had five. And, and I worked 17 hour days wow. for about 17 years. And it was it was kind of a long time. I loved everything I did and I made it fun. It helped a lot of kids. I helped these at, at risk youth kids, too. Uh, through a training program I did. And so it was great, but it was exhausting. And I learned, okay, wow, this business mastery, what this is incredible. I don't have to do everything. <laughs> and it changed my life. And, and mm -hmm. programs really changed my life and made it easier so that I could still make a lot of money and have fun, but have more family time. Yeah, and, it's so yeah. important. Well, yeah, and I want to acknowledge you for that because I think a lot of people, they go, they get coaching, they get programs, they buy all this stuff, and then nothing changes, Yeah. right? So you are at least smart enough to be like, oh, you know what? I'm going to bring my son with me. I'm going to make this an experience. <laughs> my daughter, I spoke at an event. I've spoken at it several years prior to the pandemic, and she came with me in person to see me speak. And, you know, those are the things that you can't, you know, get those back. And my other daughter was in um, gymnastics national level and we were able to go to training camps and I would arrange to do VIP days when she mm -hmm. was 
in different cities and you know really we have this gift now of the internet and you know geographic flexibility that you know our parents never had so we just have to embrace it yes definitely and i'd love to hear about your your new book coming out that sounds incredible thank you well it's called hidden profits more clients and cash and it actually was a ping like a big aha i had at the very first business mastery so we were at the first business mastery and for those of you that don't know this was an event that tony robbins created with chet holmes until chet holmes passed away and then tony took it back but what what this this was an incredible event the first one was right at the beginning of the recession and people had paid ten thousand dollars to attend and these were already very successful business owners but they were in a scared mindset because of the fact that, you know, everything changed, people lost their lines of credit, you know, all sorts of things. And so this gentleman stood up and he said, Tony, I've tried everything and nothing works. Mm -hmm. So you can imagine saying that to Tony Robbins. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, no. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So Tony said, well, okay, that's interesting. Tell me, what have you tried? And the guy said, you know, a few things. And so Tony said, okay, so you've tried a few things. You must've tried a lot of times. Like wh how many times mm -hmm. did you try? And the guy said, oh, like two or three times. And Tony said, well, what, you know, what stopped you from keep, you know, to keep going? And he said, he said, well, I ran out of, you know, I didn't have enough time. I didn't have enough money. I didn't have enough staff. And so Tony said, so it was this lack of resources that, that stopped you. And he said, yeah. And so Tony said, have you ever met or seen or read about an immigrant to North America that came here with less than you, that is more successful than you? Mm -hmm. And the guy said, yeah, like you read about them in Entrepreneur, Success Magazine. And he said, you know, Tony said, well, so the difference is, is this person came from another country. They didn't have the command of the English language. Mm -hmm. They didn't have the university education or, you know, they didn't have a credit card, you know, they didn't have the anything and they didn't have a network. And he said, they're more successful. He said, so the difference was instead of looking at the lack of resources, they became resourceful. Mm -hmm. So that was like the aha sitting there in the back of the room as one of his coaches. Then I said, you know what? My clients at the time were experiencing this like challenge of the recession. Their mm -hmm. credit lines dried up, their you know marketing dried up. And they, so I said, how can I help them get more clients, more cash without costing more money in marketing and advertising? Mm -hmm. So I looked at all of the strategies I knew, like that if I looked at your business and saw like, where is it that you're leaving money on the table? Yes. And there's, there's a ton of them and they're all in the book. I'll give you an example of one. Yes. So one of my clients came to his coach. He, he came to a coaching session that I have to cancel. And yeah. I said, well, why? And he said, well, because I just have this hundred thousand dollars sale. Now me, I love to celebrate with my clients. So I was like, yeah, happy <laughs> dance. And he said, no, it's not a happy dance. And I was like, all right, well, how can a hundred thousand dollars sale not be a happy dance? <laughs> and he said, well, the reason why it's not is because this client has been going to my competitor for the last seven years. Mm. So that's what I call the $700,000 mistake. And so what that pinged for me was like every single client that I have should be doing a come on back strategy, oh. right? You don't wait till the client's been gone for seven years. It's a hidden profit that you have right there. You have people on your list, in your database, that have purchased from you in the past mm -hmm. that will purchase from you if you just reach out to them and offer them something. Yes. And so that's just one of the hidden profits that you can very, very easily do very quickly. You don't need a big team. You don't need a big budget. Um, and I, I would want to add to that. A lot of people have seen this in B2C businesses, like mm -hmm. the dentist, the um, chiropractor or eye doctor, but it's, extremely effective in b2b situations as well and most b2b businesses miss it and it's a huge huge loss of revenue yes wow it's what what's already you already have it it's already in front of you and you don't see it that happens <laughs> i i can't i just switched over to a new planning system i i write so i do a paper planning system and it has been in front of me for years and i didn't realize how it worked 
And so I, no, that's not the system for me. And I would walk right past it. And finally, somebody showed me how they use the system and organized it. And I was like, oh, that's exactly what I've been looking for. And it was right in front of me for many years. So And it doesn't, it wasn't hard, right? It just, no, it just, no. it just needs somebody else to point it out. Right. Because yeah. it's, it's, we don't see it for ourselves. And I, I, you know, if you look at Oprah, right. I grew mm -hmm. up on Oprah and Oprah would always do those makeover shows and they were the biggest hits for her shows every year, other than giving away lots of free stuff. Right. And so she would have this person and she would say, let me do the makeover on this person. And I, as a non-beauty person, would be like, I have no idea what to do with the person other than give them a haircut, right? But they were able to look at, oh, this color is good for them. That hair shape is good for them. This glasses is good. Yeah. And you wouldn't even recognize the person. The person was there all along, but they mm -hmm. couldn't see it for themselves. They didn't know how to pull together the right cut of jean, the right shirt, the whole shebang. And that's what mm -hmm. is in your business right now. The, yes. the average business finds $85,000 or more, even small businesses. So mm -hmm. that's, that's average for a small business. Larger businesses find way more. Oh, yes. That's incredible. And that is something that that's why we hire coaches and we go to programs like Chet's and Tony's is because we don't see what's right in front of us so many times. Yeah. And to have a, a consultant, a coach work with you and help you get to that and see things that you're missing is priceless. And I definitely hired people when I had my store starting out at 23. I didn't know what I was doing. 5,000 square feet gift store in Montreal. Wow. And I didn't know what I was doing. So I hired smart people, and, you know, like I would get the top people from Nordstrom's that they wow. wanted time with their children and I couldn't pay them their salary, but I could give them a nanny. I had two nannies on staff and they were wow. retail Sunday school teachers, grandmas. <laughs> like, How resourceful was that? You had the grandmas too. <laughs> that for my kids, um, I needed them for my little ones. And so then the, the employees also had them and I had the top staff. So I would hire marketing people and my, I would be able to double, triple my income in no time. And that's how I bought, I bought four buildings with the proceeds. Wow. I stopped renting. I didn't like renting. Amazing. <laughs> and then later when I closed, I had the buildings to rent out and have the passive income to travel and learn more and have fun with my family during that time that I really needed it. But that was it. I needed to go to other people, resources, books, educational information to help me with my business. I would pay people to like come in and look at the store and see what I'm missing. Secret shopping before we had secret shoppers because I didn't I didn't see it and they were like, well, we don't see the sign. I was like, you know, the big three foot, foot sign, you don't see it, <laughs> you know, and it was those kind of things and little switches we'd make and more money would come in. Yeah, it's super, super simple. I'll give you another example of a hidden profit. And this one is one of the most famous hidden profits that practically no one does. And that is, do you want fries with that? Mm -hmm. Right? McDonald's, when I was a kid, you would go and get a sandwich and maybe a drink if your mom was nice, right? And so mm -hmm. they started saying, do you want fries with that? And then all of a sudden, everybody was ordering trios. And mm -hmm. now they say, do you want to supersize that? Now they say, do you want a pie? I don't know, I haven't eaten at McDonald's in like 15 years. Oh. But what it, the point is, is a business can do this as well. And not just retail, not just B2C, business to business businesses can add on an upsell that increases your average sale very, very simply. So what I would tell people to do, and this is outlined in the book, is to look at what are your top products that you're selling? Like, don't try to confuse yourself and do it for every single thing in your business, right? Mm -hmm. Look at what would go well. Like, so for example, I'm just going to say a planner, right? Because you mentioned it. And so if you were selling a planner, what would be the natural upsell if that's one of your top sellers to sell with a planner? Well, if you're buying a planner, then you need some really beautiful pens to go with it, yes. right? You need some yeah. really cool sticky notes and some mm -hmm. stickers. And so like you can bundle stuff together for that upsell that people are like, ah, that makes sense. Mm -hmm. I had a gentleman again in the recession that, and the reason why I bring up the recession, even though that was a long time ago, is that Right now, for a lot of people with the pandemic, it's challenging times. And I want to acknowledge that and say that, like, during the challenging times, during the recession, these things still worked. Mm -hmm. And so, for example, this gentleman, he had a store. It was down south. 
his competitors were national box retailers and they were coming in and like blowing up the TV, blowing up the, it, you know, the newspaper ads, everything. And he said, I don't have the budget to compete with these big box people. Sure. And I, when we looked at his business and I looked at, all right, where are the areas they're going to optimize to grow it? He mentioned his staff and he said, my staff is like, they don't do anything I say. Oh, no. And I said, well, we're going to have to get rid of some of the staff. And he said, well, I can't because mm -hmm. my staff, they were his uncles, they were his nephews, they were people he went to church with. Mm -hmm. And he said, I wouldn't be able to hold up my head in church if I laid people off during the recession, especially. Oh. So I said, all right, what the heck do we do? And again, that's where the hidden profit came. I'm like, all right, what can we do with his existing business with the stuff that doesn't want to do anything? Uh -huh. So we said, what's your most popular product? And in his case, it was um, stuff for an oil change because they're mm -hmm. an auto parts store. And it's funny because I don't do a lot of B2C, but that's that's what he was in. And I said, well, I know nothing about cars what would be the great thing that they could buy with that? And he said, well, you should also get an air filter at the same time. Yeah. So all we did was implement a policy that every time somebody bought things for an oil change, that mm -hmm. they would just say, you know, have you, you know, changed your air filters lately? And he increased his sales 48% over the same month pre -pan pre pre um, recession. Mm -hmm. because it was like, boom, the, his sales went way up. So another little hidden profit for you guys. Yes, that is, that's incredible. And it's something I actually got my oil changed a few weeks ago and they did that there. <laughs> so I was like, okay, um, here's an extra, I don't know. I think it was like 40 bucks or whatever. And uh, I think the oil change was like 120. And so that was an X that is, that really makes a big difference. So there's yeah, these things that we miss. Yeah. And it's in service of the client, right? Whether it's the planner, it's the oil change, it's a co coaching or a consulting package. Mm -hmm. You're saying, how can I serve this client better, right? So if somebody signed up for a coaching package with me and they were like, I really want to run with it and go fast, then maybe they want to start off with a retreat here at my lake house for two mm -hmm. days that we plan everything out, right? right? Or they want to do a VIP day and we like spend that time online and do it if they don't want to travel. But the thing is, is that, that's an upsell that's very simple and easy because they're already ready to buy, right? They want more help. They want to buy the yeah. thing to plan their time. They want to take care of their car, whatever it is. Yes. Yeah. I had no problem. I was like, oh, thank you. That's great. Yeah. <laughs> you know, and I thanked them and gave them money. So it makes sense. It does. And it is something they need. And when I bought that planner, I bought a bunch of pens and stickers and all these other things and spent more on all those other things than the planner. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> and, they, and if the store had put that in place of like, all right, anytime you're selling this, if this is our most popular product, we're going to give you this stuff too to choose from, people would be loading up, like you said, like doubling their sale yes, with the yes. same. And they've already done the marketing to get you in the door. They've already mm -hmm. done the marketing to get you to purchase. They've already have the salesperson. They already have the software, anything that they're paying their costs are the same, but now they've increased the, the average sale exponentially. Yes. yes. Now, what advice do you have for people that are now starting these side businesses, side gigs? They're just, they're just starting out because, oh my gosh, you know, their business, their company they worked for for so many years is gone. And they're very talented and they're starting a business, but they know nothing. What advice would you give them? Because there's a whole lot of people doing this right now. Yeah, there's that. It's a great question because I think it's really important to create your your future yourself instead of waiting for somebody else to do it for you. Um, so there's a few things. So um, one thing I would tell you right off the bat, and you know this from attending Business Mastery, Chet Holmes preaches about the Dream 100, right? Hmm. To choose who are your perfect clients. So it doesn't matter what you're selling. It doesn't matter what niche you're in. Who are those perfect clients? And those are the 20% that are going to make up for 80% of your sales, right? Yeah. And it's not saying that you can't serve the rest of the market, but if you start focusing your marketing on those people, mm -hmm. then they're going to be attracted to you. They're going to buy from you and they're going to buy more. They're going to refer more. They're going to stay with you longer and they're not going to be bargaining on price as much. So mm -hmm. really look at, 
who those perfect clients are. The great thing is now with social media, we can find out a lot more about those people. So what I would say is to go look at, look at their Facebook, look at their LinkedIn, look at their Insta, their Snapchat, whatever things you're on Pinterest and see what is it that these people like? You know, are they watching Keeping Up With The Kardashians? Are they, um, you know, watching Shark Tank? Like if you pick your perfect client, what's in their head? So like, if I look at my perfect clients, what I've discovered about them, I have a lot of people that are Ivy League, which is funny because I'm not an Ivy Leaguer, right? But I have a lot of people that have advanced degrees, they're doctors of something, not mm -hmm. medical doctors and they're lawyers they're they're very high highly successful people that want to reach that next level they feel a lot of them feel like everybody sees them as successful but they don't see themselves as successful because they know inside that they're capable of more so they feel really frustrated right. and so when i started speaking in that language to people all of a sudden these people that are super brilliant would be like yeah that's totally me like mm -hmm. that's totally me. And so you want to look at what is the pain of that perfect client and what is the, the want, like, what is their want? What is their goal? What is their dream? And where I would caution newbies is it's not what they need. It's what they want. So for example, to clarify that, like the majority of Americans need to lose weight, right? But do we want to lose weight and are we willing to do what we have to do to lose weight? That's another story, right? right? So what we need to look at is what is it that they want? So is it that they want to lose weight or is it that they want to have more energy, right? Like mm -hmm. they might want to have more energy, but they might not be willing to give up their, you know, wine or something. Right. So we want to look at what they want. And as Tony Robbins always says, people move away from pain and towards pleasure. That's how mm -hmm. they do things. So you want to start to communicate in the language that helps them see, oh, I can move away from my pain, move towards what I want. Yes. So right. Yes, that's something that's very important. And to find the, the ideal client, because a lot of times people are trying to market to everyone for whatever they're doing. And when you find that right client, they're like, like me with that planner. I was like, oh my gosh, I got to get to the store right now. I found the secret, you know, it's like, <laughs> this is what I've been looking for. And it was ridiculous. And, and I went to different stores and you know, all these things. I mean, it's just, then you don't have, you have a raving fan and you don't. I was just going to say your whole face is lighting up. You're excited yes. about it. I mean, that, that is what you want for your clients. You don't want people that you have to drag kicking and screaming to the sale. Because mm -hmm. if you have to drag them kicking and screaming to the sale and use manipulative sales and all that, they're not going to be a great client for you. You're going to have to keep dragging them. They're going to keep sucking your energy. Mm -hmm. So don't waste time on the energy vampires that are like, oh, I don't want that. Like if if they were to look at you, is this a pay, this is a paper planner, right? So if they were to, to market to people that want electronic planners and they have a paper planner, to be barking up the wrong tree, right? So they have to market to the people that are like, oh, I really want to have it in front of me. I want to go to the coffee shop and I want to lay it out and I want to think about what I want and plan it out. And if they start to speak in that language, they're gonna they're gonna attract the right people. The other thing I would tell newbies or side hustlers is to focus on revenue generating activities. I had a coach say to me like 20 years ago, he said, stop focusing on the BS funnel. Mm. You know everybody and it's even worse nowadays because you can do everything yourself like you can make your own website you can make your own funnel so you're like oh i'm gonna tweak this i'm gonna fix this i'm gonna make this better you have to stop doing all this back end stuff that's not going to generate revenue you need mm -hmm. to go out and talk to people you need to go you know ask for a sale make an offer you can't not make an offer or you're not going to have a business it's just a nice hobby yes that's that's so important we are our our business cards. We don't even have business cards anymore, mostly <laughs> nowadays, yeah. but we are how we show up and sharing about what you're doing in a way where you're not selling them something, but just sharing because you're happy. You'll get so many clients that way. It's, it's incredible. Uh, when I tell my stories and this and that, I end up having lots and lots of clients. Oh, tell me how to do that. Where do I sign up? I'll be at a happy hour or an event or, you know, something in my little community here. And, and it'll just be, people will hire me because of 
just a story I told. It wasn't, I wasn't even trying to sell them on a coaching, consulting, whatever. No. And it just happens. So that's it. And you know, the funny thing, I think back to getting that planner. Do you know what I did? I called my close friend who also writes all the time, reads all the time and loves to journal. And I said, oh my gosh, why didn't you tell me about this planner thing? She said, I never heard about it. He went out and bought it. So what happens when you get the right target person, they're going to tell their people, their friends, and guess what? Their friends are like them. They, you know, for me reading and journaling and writing <laughs> and we're writers and this and that. So then they're going to go and tell their friends. And how many sales happened? I don't even know, but I think she told a lot of people too. <laughs> well, it's a ripple. It's a ripple effect, right? Yes. Because now like you're so lit up about this planner mm -hmm. and like you're glowing about it. And <laughs> it's like, if somebody that's a writer that likes to journal says like, I'm looking for a planner, I'm going to be like, oh, Sheila Mack, she told me about this amazing yes. thing. Even yes. if I'm not using the planner for me, exactly. I'm going to be like, you need to go check this out because this is perfect for you. Yes. And that's the key. When yes. people that they're your perfect client refer so many more clients, which is amazing. Because yeah, no marketing dollars. None. You don't have to pay for this affiliate marketing if you if you do your marketing correctly with the finding that right client, that avatar for your business, I think. I mean, you can yeah, still for sure, it, but you don't have to. No, no, not at all. And I think the other thing that I've seen with having my perfect client is that you know, somebody asked me on an interview I did this morning, another podcast, they said, well, you know, how long do people stay with you? And I said, well, the funny thing is, is you can sign up for, you know, a VIP day or six months or 12 months. But I said, I have clients who have been with me for 13 years. Mm -hmm. You know, I have clients who have been with me for seven or eight years. Like it is not like a quick fix, right? It's really like when you're investing in coaching and consulting and you're getting a return on investment, then you're not going to be like, oh, I'm going to go try this program. I'm going to go try this. They're my perfect client. They know that we're going to keep working on optimizing and whatever. Like my client started out with me, they were at six figures. Well, guess what? We got to seven figures. Well, like it's not time to stop now. Let's keep going. How do we get to eight figures? Right. And so we've gotten to eight figures. Now we're at eight figures. It's like, okay, what are we going to do to grow the team so that we can exit this business? Right. And so, you know, the perfect clients will stay with you for a long time. Yes. Yes. Because you keep helping them. I have some clients like that too. And I, it's, it's just interesting because if you're saving them money and making them so much more money, they will just, I, they're always, anytime they need an extra um, hour or two, I'll spend, sometimes I'll spend five hours with them. And the next thing you know, they'll send other businesses my way as well. Yes, and sure. so back to that referral thing. And so that's really important to put the people first. And yeah. that authentic, like I really love and care for all my clients and people that I work with. And, and I know you do too. I could just tell, and that's the, the people feel it. So yeah, what it sure. is give businesses to really be people focused because I think that's so important right now. People feel the energy of, I just want to make a sale versus this is like a client family. This is somebody I care about that I'm going to make sure I give them the results they need. What, what is that difference? How can people well, I, present that? I think sometimes it's like, like when I got started in my first career was in insurance. And when I was in insurance, I, I was a really good salesperson. I was the number two salesperson in a yeah. fortune 500 company my first week. Right. So I came out of the gate running <laughs> and, but the thing was, is like, people would say, Oh, I want to get this. I want to get that. And it was all deducted from their paycheck. And I said, you know what? I said, I would be happy to sell this to you. But I said, if I sold this to you next month, when you get your paycheck and you have like deduction for this deduction for that deduction for that. I said, let's get you what you need right now. And mm -hmm. if you want to add on the extra coverages the next time, then we'll do that. But like, I didn't want them making an emotional decision that they were going to regret. And I think what happens is people start to trust you mm -hmm. because they know like, oh, I'm not just there to, to sell as many things as I possibly could. Mm -hmm. And so I, for for new people or for experienced people, I would look at what is that effect that you want to have? Like, what is your mission? Like my mission is to get entrepreneurs back to their family so they can have that level of prosperity that they can have the freedom to spend with their family. Right. 
And so when you look at that, like one of my clients, he big internet marketer, he was on the Inc 5000 list like three or four years. And he started playing Taekwondo with his son on Fridays, right? Like that's time he's never going to get back if he stays in the office. Yes. And so it's like, what is it that you do? What is that ripple effect that you're going to have for your, for your clients? Like, even if it's a planner, you still can have a ripple effect for your clients. So I get really, I, I have my clients sit down and do like a map of like, okay, here's the effect that I have for my client. Okay. That's great. They're going to make more money. They're going to save more time. They're going to be less stressed. That's great. But then what's the next level? Oh, well now they're going to be able to spend more time with their kids and their spouse or their partner. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now it's the next level. Oh, well, you know, what? now they're able to give back to the community because they have more prosperity. So they have the budget, like, you know, they can give to the food bank, they can give to the refugees, they can do what's their passion. Then what's the next level? Oh, the next generation, guess what? Mm -hmm. Their kids now believe that this is possible for them and they can create a life and then they're empowering the next generation. And so if you look at it like that, like what is that ripple effect that I want for my business? Mm -hmm. And when you come from that, it's a much easier space than making a sale of like a gadget or something. And if it's not something that you believe in, then don't, don't sell it. Yes. Now, now see, I had that gift store I brought up and it had a heart and the heart was helping those kids. So I came out of the foster care system and I had these kids at risk youth that were emancipating from foster care. Nobody wanted to hire over 200 kids went through this training program and I worked wow. with the government with job training partnership act. And so they got six months of training. I had to film it with that heavy camcorder, the 20 pound and, and, you know, it I was remember those in the big, huge thing. And, and I, this was before we had YouTube and filming the trainings and how to's. <laughs> and so I was definitely out of my time, but I showed that to the government and then they would get the best jobs, the highest paying jobs after just six months with the training. And that was my heart. My top mm. sales lady, actually my managing lady, she, um, Lori, she actually came from Nordstrom's, but she was trained as a social worker. And so she helped with my kids. And so I had this whole thing. That was my heart and helping the community. And we had fun and music. We had 5,000 square foot store. So I'd have live music. All wow. this fun stuff. So it wasn't just selling a gift. Right. Right. You know? And people that, feel that. Right. And you yeah. know that when you're giving somebody a gift, that that's going to make them feel a certain way. So like having team there, that's like really able to help them choose something from the heart means yeah. different than going down the store to Nordstrom's or going to Walmart or yeah. somewhere or ordering online. And that's where, right. you know, it, it comes into play, whether you're a small bookstore or anything is mm -hmm. to like really put your heart and soul into it. I remember um, I wrote an article on my blog about the $80 cup of tea. Mm -hmm. And um, it was like, I went, what it was is that I spilled tea on my laptop and I was writing my book. It was actually while I was writing Hidden Province. It was the very first day I had taken myself to the lake to work on it by myself in the woods. And I spilled my tea on my laptop, my water. And I went to get it fixed at the store. And I went to the bookstore next door and she gave me a cup of tea and she cared about me. She's like, oh, that really, you know. And that, because of that $80 cup of tea, yeah. like I spent like $80 at the bookstore, right? Because it was like, she she had a heart there of like, oh, I really feel for you. You're having a hard day. Yes. And, you know, she she was there and people feel that. Mm, yes. And we actually sold tea and we always gave free tea. <laughs> that was oh, that's awesome. One of the, it would have been one of the clients for sure. And I'm a big tea drinker. I, I don't drink coffee. <laughs> And we would have, I would have this rule where I told everybody that worked for me that everybody that comes in is royalty and whether they buy something or not, you treat them like that. So they yeah. would get a free sample. They would get this and maybe they wouldn't buy or they'd spend five or $10. And then the holidays would show up and they would literally hand us the, the gift list. 
and it would end the and the budget and we would have it all wrapped and done for them we had this whole That's service amazing. and so it was and they'd bring me the country club worked with me i had cruise ships and lots because it was california I had lots of people in the industry um in the entertainment industry that would source i would help them source items that they were looking for for show props and so I had all these crazy wow, things. Wow, that's amazing. Because I, I had conversations with the with the people that walked in and I, I talked to them and they invited me to their weddings. I was like, oh my gosh, what's their name? Because, you know, they don't have a name name badge I do and so it was that, but that that does make a difference and people feel that energy. And sometimes when you're starting out, you think, okay, well, where's this money? But it shows up when you have that heart in the business it's a heart centric business model i guess mm -hmm. and really important makes a big difference absolutely and i think i think you can see like i recently found myself in a situation that i was i had invested in something and i was not i had a horrible feeling about it and mm -hmm. it was just like there was not the care there it was like i was a dollar sign and mm -hmm. i said like i've spent more money on other programs with people that made more money, but actually gave a crap about you, Yes, you know, and it was like, it just felt really crappy. And it's funny because people reached out to me this week and they're like, are you feeling that too? And I was like, see, like now there's a ripple effect with this person's business that everybody's talking about how terrible it is. And a lot mm -hmm. of people are leaving and it's because it's not the heart. It's all about a dollar sign. Right. And, and why do we go to work? It's that whole going back to we go to work, we have a business to serve other people and then to have this time with our family to provide for our family, our loved ones to live this this life. And sometimes you can just work all your life. And in the end, you don't have anything left but a lot of hours of work. <laughs> yeah, I mean, and, and that's the thing. I mean, because my dad died so young, mm -hmm. like. It, it made me realize like he literally got cancer in September. He was gone the day before Thanksgiving. And um, mm. so it was like a month and a half. And yeah. it's like, yes, he, he changed a lot of people's lives. He helped some people, but he, he really had a lot of regrets. And so mm. for me, it's like, if I can help other people avoid having those types of regrets, mm. then I'll have done something, you know? And also if I'm also modeling it myself, Right. that you know i'm able to do it with my kids with my spouse you know that that's important as well yes yes and the exit strategy what would you say about exit strategy plans for a business well it's funny because <laughs> i get a lot of clients that they they don't want to exit their business and i think that's the gift of this time frame that we're in right now mm -hmm. is that we're in this time that you know, you could go to Italy for a month and guess what? You could still connect through the internet. You could put your team in place. So I'm seeing a lot of people now that are like, okay, I'll probably want to stay for quite a long time, right. but I'm seeing a trend where people are wanting to have their employees take over the business. That's, that's mm -hmm. what I'm seeing. Most people is that they see the people that have given to them and put their heart and soul into it. And they're like, you know what, this person is the person that I would choose. Like I want to sell my business to this person, mm -hmm. but that's it has to be in a way that your sales are not all depending on the founder, right? Mm -hmm. You have to have your sales system, your marketing system optimized, yeah. your messaging optimized so that it could be a sellable business. Mm hmm. That's really important. Now, for me, I bought the other buildings with my stores. So I purchased four buildings in California that were very big. And when I exited, I knew a year in advance that it was time I wanted to be with my children more. And they were in school. So I became a teacher for a while and was at their school and I had a great time. But when I left, I let people know in advance and I helped every single employee get another job. We're still friends today. Amazing. <laughs> later. And so that was something that gave me a lot of peace. And then, you know, passive income with properties and cash flow was so nice. And so that worked out. That was mine. And now the people that didn't have that didn't invest in their property or other properties or whatever. They didn't have something to fall back on and they didn't even use business credit. So that's another thing that's really important is a lot of times when you're a new business, you use your personal credit and you can get 
that's how I bought these buildings with business credit. I bought cars, I bought buildings <laughs> with the business credit. And starting, I started this business when I was 23. How do you give wow, it to them? That's amazing. Credit? How do you give them business credit? They, I had so much credit. You, you just, I could buy anything I wanted. And, and, but I was really conservative about it. And I would pay the buildings down. That's and I would, awesome. I would do the sweat equity while I was young and clean and do, you know, whatever. Little yeah. Equity. Yeah to pay, just pay this building off. And then I'd buy the next one. And so that was something. And those, some stores were way more successful. They had been there for 30, 40 years, but they kept taking it out of their home and they would do a home, you know, every oh, no. summer that summers are slow for retail. They would pull money out of their home, home equity loan. Yeah. Oh. And, and then they would run the business through that. And so then when, you know, they got older, got sick, this and that, they didn't have uh anything to fall back on for the family and so that was the that little bit of a difference just having investing or saving so much aside we have to reinvest i yeah, love to talk about so reinvesting and marketing what what's your thought on how much a business should put into marketing um and branding and <laughs> reinvesting well, Business. You know, it's it's different for everybody depending on your stage of business, right? And so I think I, I'm not popular with the branding people because I'm like, you don't need to brand your business to sell. Um, get out. Like, that's one of the things that I think people get a little too wrapped up in in the beginning of like, they're spending all this money and they haven't made any money yet. Like, mm -hmm. I have clients that I have two clients. I also um, have both exited their companies and sold them. And they they didn't spend a lot of money on branding. They spent their money on it was bootstrapped, right? So I think there's a power in that bootstrapping of like not getting partners, not getting you know funding, you know like they they are not beholden to somebody else, right? right? Mm -hmm. It's one thing to get business credit for yourself, but to have some other partners that yeah. is not a good fit that that causes a lot of problems. And a lot of these people that go for the venture capital they they don't even have a sellable product mm. you know so it's really important to look at like let's let's develop what you're going to sell like let's get some information like who that perfect client is what's the best pricing let's talk to a bunch of people right yes. and that, by talking to people i mean like doing the marketing sending the emails doing facebook lives or linkedin lives go do speaking in events see what resonates with people and then mm. go deeper on those things, right? Yes. And the other thing I'll tell you is I'm a big believer. Part of the add a zero without a hustle program is to optimize your marketing and create a stacked marketing plan. So mm. this is huge because in over 20 years of coaching, like years ago, I had a client who was doing extremely well, had a hundred employees overnight. He had to lay off everybody oh. because they passed the do not call law. Right? Mm. So we don't know. And I think the pandemic is, you know, really showing people like we don't know what's going to happen, number one. And we yeah. have no control over all the things the government does, number two. And we just have to roll with it and figure out new ways to pivot. Right. Yes. Like I was talking to a business owner last night in Quebec, in Canada, you now have to have a vaccine passport to go like she has a dance studio for students. And they cannot come to her studio unless they have this vaccine passport. She's like, yeah. I have just spent the last two years developing online training for these kids, doing right. everything while still having my physical space. And now I have something else to do. So right. you really have to look at how can you diversify your, your marketing of not just relying on Facebook, not just relying on Instagram, because like the pandemic has taught us, things can change like that. And Facebook can shut you down. Right. In a minute, like I've been banned on Facebook, not banned, but they've shut down my ad accounts multiple yes. times, even oh, though yeah. I didn't do anything. Mm -hmm. And it was funny because they were like, oh, you're selling for you know, crypto. They told me I was selling crypto. I'm like, I don't even have any crypto. And they told me that I was doing work from home opportunity, which I wasn't mm -hmm. like. So like because of the bots and things that they do, yeah. it can affect your business. And I would send them a letter and say like, this is really affecting my small business. This is affecting my ability to provide for my family. You know, and that's one of the times when you said, when was a really hard time? That was a really hard time. I had yeah. invested in a mastermind with Russell Brunson 
mm-hmm. you know, with ClickFunnels, hundred million dollar company, expensive yeah. mastermind, everybody's making a million dollars, and me, I get my ads account shut down. Oh no! So you, so you have to diversify and have that whole stacked marketing so that you have multiple things working for you and bringing them back to your website. Mm, that makes sense. That's great. Now we're coming to the end of our time, so I'd love for you to share maybe what the experience is like who who would be a good fit for contacting you for the consulting and the different programs you have and then also um, to share about where they can get your book and when that's going to be sure yes yeah, so i work with people that are very successful already they have six seven eight figure businesses and they're looking to add that zero and make more profit but mm-hmm. without the hustle so that means like if you're somebody that you're like I just want to grind 24 seven. I am not your person. Like Gary V's people, not my people, Grant Cardone's people, not my people. Right. So I really want to work with people that are like, how can I do this smarter? How can I get more out of everything I'm doing in my business? And that's what we do when we optimize it. So most of my people are very successful. Like I said before, is like, they feel like everybody sees them as successful, but they're Mm -hmm. like, this is just like the little tip of the iceberg. I could have like the whole iceberg and I'm just settling for this little bit. And so if you know that you have that potential inside you and you know that you have the potential in your business, then I'm the person that I can help you see that bigger vision and Mm -hmm. put the steps in place strategically to help you reach it. And I do mastermind, I do one-on-one coaching and, retreats here at the lake house you can see the the pretty sunsets um that we have for my doc um but you can go to stacyhighland.com and it's stacy with an ey and highland is h-y-l-e-n help you leverage everything now for those of you to spell it and you can book a free call with me and you know you probably know from me talking to sheila here that i'm very like i want what's best for you so Mm -hmm. Like my kids are still going to eat, whether you sign up for coaching or not. Like I want what's best for you. And if we're not a good fit, then I'll pass you on to somebody in my network. Um, And I'm not a hard sell. I really want people that want to stay for a long time. Like most of my people stay for multiple years because they're getting that return on investment year after year. My book is going to be coming out in the fall. So go to stacyheinland.com. The other place you can go get on the advanced list is moreclientsandcash.com. And I'm going to send you a checklist, which has some of the hidden profits on it Mm -hmm. that are things that you can do quickly to get more clients in cash. So go to stacyhighland.com if you want to book a call to talk. If you want to get on the early bird list for the book, go to moreclientsandcash.com. Outstanding. All right. Well, thank you again, Stacey, for being a guest on the show. And for those tuning in, we'll be back after these messages. Stay tuned. Thanks, Sheila. If you are just tuning in, this is NBC Sheila Mack Show here on KCAA Radio, the station that leaves no listener behind. I'm your host, Sheila Mack, and today I'd like to give special thanks to this episode's sponsor, ImpressionDerma.com. Just listen in, and I can tell you myself that I am loving this new product. Average adult spends nearly nine hours on electronic devices every day. Blue light emitted by those devices penetrates deep into your skin, causing digital aging. The revolutionary serum reverses blue light damage with 13 powerful active ingredients to protect your skin. Scroll with confidence as Let's Face It blocks harmful blue light. Get ready to reboot your skincare routine with Let's Face It Protective Serum at ImpressionsDerma.com. You need a guide to show you how we get through a situation like this, to give you resources and to help you get out of the emotional pea soup fog of dealing with a crisis and the resulting fallout. I've been there and I'm here to help you. Order this guide book bootstraps and bra straps the formula to go from rock bottom back into action in any situation the book includes 12 free gifts and is available on amazon audible kindle and at sheilamac.com s-h-e-i-l-a-m-a-c.com bootstraps and bra straps the formula to go from rock bottom back into action in any situation is available 
on Amazon, Audible, Kindle, and at SheilaMack.com. Remember, it's not one size fits all. Just like a pair of boots or a bra. So the formula is designed to help you through any situation. To grab a copy of my new best-selling book, Bootstraps and Bra Straps, 